Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to talk about the seed frames and I'm going to show you the structure that I made for the back of the body. Now one thing you may have noticed in the previous video was I made this cart to put the body on. Now I originally planned to just finish the body while it was on the chassis because I figured once I got this far assembled it would be too heavy to move. But this body is actually surprisingly pretty light. So I have it on this cart to make it easier to move around and it's going to be easier to do the bodywork and paint like this. And swapping it from this to the chassis and back is pretty easy and not dangerous at all. Another thing I'll point out, which I figured out a while ago, I just never got around to mentioning it, is I got this piece of wood between the cowl panels. Now, obviously the 1914 and earlier bodies, they don't have any structure above here. So, the only thing that holds this part is the firewall. Now, when you put the door on here, with the weight of all that, after a while this whole thing starts to twist out. And it was doing that slowly a while ago, when I was trying to align the doors. And it took me a while to figure that out. So, have this on here to keep it true. And now let's talk about the seat frame. Now first of all, it's got the sheet metal seat riser that I made several videos ago. And I kind of stuck more or less to the original design of these. So it's got kind of a wood frame behind it. And then it's got this wood frame that screws on top of it. And this is pretty much how they were in 1913 and 14. I considered making all this out of steel, like the later bodies, pretty much copying that design. But I chose not to for a few reasons. Now, first of all, on those, the seat riser is a completely different design. I would either have to modify this a lot or just make a new one. And that was more work than I wanted to do. But emotionally, when you take the seat cushion out and look at this, the wood frame, it looks more proper. It looks more like a proper reproduction 1913 body. If you look down here and you only see steel on it, it looks kind of more like a replica. And I decided that mattered to me, so I went with this design. There's a few parts still missing to this. It's supposed to have a flange across here made of sheet metal that holds the bottom cushion in. And it's also supposed to have a tray that goes across here. Now this year they were made of wood and the frame would have a step in it for it. The later ones were made of sheet metal. And if I make one for this, it'll be like the later ones in sheet metal. But I haven't decided if I'm going to make one yet. So for now, I'm just going to leave it. When putting together the seats for this car, I tried as hard as I could to get the dimensions exactly the way they were originally. Now when you're fabricating a brand new car body like this, you do consider relocating the seats or adjusting a few things here and there. I chose not to for a few reasons. First of all, there's nothing really wrong with these. I've driven these cars for several hours at a time, and I'm perfectly comfortable in them. I don't really have any complaints, so there's nothing really to fix. But the biggest reason is when you start adjusting the seat location, not just up and down or front to back, but the angle of the backrest, the angle of the bottom cushion, you can really start to build in problems really fast. It is really fussy. And if you move the seat around too much from where it was originally, you may have to relocate the controls like the steering column and the pedals which is quite a lot of work. I've learned this from watching people building hot rods and speedster bodies. The seats can be very fussy. If you have too much pressure on your back in one location and not enough in another, you can get a pretty good backache just from driving around the block. They are really fussy. Another big consideration is since the seat is part of the structure of the body, you can't adjust it later on, so you really want to get it right the first time. I did consider building it to the specifications of the 1922 and newer bodies, 
the ones that use the oval fuel tank because on those they lowered the seat pretty far and they have more back support. However, they look considerably different from the outside even when they're finished and I want this to look authentic so I went with the original design. Over these past couple of months I've collected a few more parts and now I can show you specifically the differences on these seat frames. Now, first of all there's this one which I've already shown you in a previous video. It's for the back seat but it's constructed about the same. This is what was used during 1913 and 14. It's got a flange on each end going inward and it's pretty much just an end cap and there's supposed to be a wood frame that goes inside of it. It's, it's 20 gauge steel. There's nothing really elaborate about it. Then it's got a wood frame that goes on top of it and that's what the seat cushion sits on. Now this one over here which was used by the beginning of 1916. First of all, it's a thicker gauge steel. It's 17 gauge. It doesn't have a wood frame that goes on the inside. It holds itself together. It's got this flange here to hold the seat cushion. And they eliminated the wood frame that goes on top of this. The seat cushion just sits here. And because of that, it's 3 quarters of an inch taller than the previous one. Also, the sides of it, because it doesn't have the wood frame, it's got these steel angles on it. It also has this section of floor down here, and it screws to the sills. Now, during 1915, more steel parts are being phased in. So there's a few bodies built during that year that are constructed like a combination between these two. So if you have a car that doesn't match either one of these, that may be the reason. But this was the standard design they went with beginning in 1916. This one was introduced around 1922 with the introduction of the oval fuel tank. Now, it's constructed pretty much the same as the last one. It's got the steel angle on each side, and the cushion sits directly on top of it. But it's dimensionally completely different. It's about a full inch lower than the last one, and it bolts alongside of the door post instead of behind it, so it sticks out further. And also has this corner here because this sticks out further than the door, and the earlier ones it doesn't. And this is pretty much the last design for this series. It was used through 1925. The 26-27 models are completely different. The sill reinforcement braces that I made, I since cleaned them up and now I'm holding them on with carriage bolts all around. And this part where the door is, I drilled a bunch of holes and countersunk them and I plan to put wood screws all along here. I also made the tow panel that goes under the front seat. Now. Most of these have beads running across them, but the early ones were flat like this. Now on the bottom of it, I made this uh, box section because this is kind of a weak point on them. If you put foot pressure on them, they usually just V out right here. I didn't weld it all the way across because I didn't want to heat warp this too much, but it should work. And now, let's talk about the back of the body. Now, probably the first thing you notice is this steel tube I made for it, like I did with the front seat. And it's kind of pretty much the same design. This goes from one door post all the way to the other, and it's bolted on to the back pretty much the same way. Now, there is more wood that's going to go in here, and then there's the top brackets, and this will eventually attach to all that. But for now, that's what it looks like. 
up to now, we've been working on the front of the body, and the construction on it is pretty traditional. It's a wood frame, and there's individual steel panels that just attach to it. The steel panels do provide some structural support, but they're more for looks than anything else. And because there's such an elaborate wood frame, the seat frame is just kind of hung onto the existing frame. The back of the body, however, is a completely different story. And this is something that's kind of funny. It takes some getting used to, if you're not used to working on these. Because the outside, it's made from individual panels, but they're all welded together. And because of their general shape, it kind of holds itself together as kind of a unitized construction. It doesn't have a lot of wood to it. It just has a few pieces here and there to reinforce the weak areas. Now these earlier bodies, they have a little bit of wood structure in here, not much, but by 1916, 1917, pretty much all they had was they had the door posts, they had the uprights for the backrest, and the tack strip that went around the outside, and that was it. There was nothing inside here, which is kind of strange. doesn't seem like it would be all that strong, but they do work that way. And what makes all that important right now is that, unlike the front seat, since there's no elaborate wood structure here to hang the seat frame off of, the seat frame is its own structure, independent from the rest of the body. And here's the back seat assembly done. Now, like the front seat, originally this would have been made entirely out of wood, and that was eventually replaced with steel beginning around 1916. But during 1915, a few steel parts were phased in, and that's where I got the idea from for this design. So internally, it's made of steel, like the later bodies, and then it's got a wood frame on top of it, so it looks more old-fashioned from the outside. Now back here, where it attaches to the sill, I added an inch and a half to the outside of it to move this over to get as much storage space in here as I could, because this part under the back seat is the only storage area in the entire car. If you're wondering what these half round holes are for on the back, these are access holes to get to the rear fender brackets because once the body is assembled they can only be installed from the inside. On the inside, like I said, because the rear fender brace is being held by this, I added a brace here to reinforce it. The next thing to do on this is I need to install and align all the top mounting brackets and I need to make the tack strips and the rest of the wood for inside here. And there's a lot to talk about on that, on how that was done originally and the changes they did over the years and how I plan to do it. And obviously I have to take all this apart again and paint everything. And all that's just going to have to wait for another video. But besides all that, the only thing left to do on this is to finish the doors and then it'll be a complete body. But anyway, that's it for this video. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.